presentation. Once again, really, it's a great privilege in our life to gather together in this manner to have this Bible study. So let us all prayerfully sit in the presence of God. And as we are continuing the, uh, the study of the book of Revelation today. Um, so first of all, uh, Aksa will be uh, summarizing the previous portions now. Then after that, we will be continuing uh, the classes. Yeah, so last week we learned about the song in heaven. It is in Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. And we learned about the three reasons of Hallelujah Chorus. Uh, the first one is God has judged his enemies. It is in Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. The second is God is on the throne. And the third is the marriage of the Lamb has come. It is in Revelation chapter uh, uh, 19 verse 7 to 10 and we studied about the custom of wedding in Jewish community and its connection with New Testament church as bride. The first point we studied about the engagement uh, it is in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 uh, we learned about the bridegroom must give a price to give uh, get a bride. Mm -hmm. It is in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, verse 2. And the second point we learned about the bridegroom prepares a house. Uh, it is in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. Uh, the, we learned about the appearance of the bridegroom. Uh, it is in First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. And uh, we studied about the marriage feast. It is in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9 and Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. <coughs> Uh, and we, the last point we studied about the guest of the wedding feast, we learned about the Old Testament saint who died before the death of Christ. And the second point is uh, prophet and faith warriors of Old Testament. And the third is who suffered and martyred during the time of the Great Tribulation. And the fourth one was, uh, the fourth one is, uh, one lakh forty five thousand selected people from twelve tribes of Israel, and the last point we studied about uh, two witness whom God sent during the time of the great tribulation. Praise God, Hallelujah! So really, uh, you know, we 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 studied many of the points uh, in the in the previous class and uh, uh, like uh, you know from chapter 19 you know so we already studied many things from chapter 19 uh, like the song in heaven uh, for three reasons and also uh, the custom of wedding in jewish community uh, the betrothal or the engagement uh, of uh, the uh, of the church the new testament church with the bridegroom jesus christ and bride and the New Testament uh, church also, and also bridegrooms, uh, uh, we understand that Jesus Christ is a bridegroom and church is the New Testament church is the bride. And uh, we studied about the marriage feast and many, many other things, okay? So today uh, we are starting with the portion of uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 21, uh, 11 to 21. So up to verse 10, we already studied many things. Now. We are starting with uh, uh, chapter 19, verses 11 to 21. Uh, in that portion, uh, we are trying to study about uh, the glorious return of Jesus Christ, the glorious return of Jesus Christ as a judge and as a king. And in following chapters, we will study about the glorious events which comes after the glorious return of Jesus. So we will be in uh, we'll be studying all those points in detail like uh, uh, how the glorious return of Jesus Christ is going to happen and all those things you know so we are trying to understand uh, how the glorious return of Jesus Christ is going to happen and we will see that Jesus Christ is coming again uh, as a judge or as a king and uh, and and after that maybe in uh, chapter 20 or 21 and 22, there are many things, many events are happening uh, that will be coming uh, after the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Okay, so when we study from chapter 19, verses 11 
to 21, you can see a particular thing, particular event is happening in that particular portion. Uh, that is the glorious return of Jesus Christ. The glorious return of Jesus Christ. Okay. So I'll say you can read uh, maybe uh, verse 11. Okay. Chapter 19, verse 11. And then after that, we will uh, go through those portions and we will understand what is the main uh, uh, points in that uh, portion. Then I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it, it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Okay. In verse 11, we read about a white horse and somebody sitting on the horse. There is a white horse and somebody is sitting on the horse. So the same thing is written even in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2 also. Okay. So the same thing is written that you can see there also a, a, a white horse and also there is a there is a person sitting on the on the uh, uh, white horse okay so the rider on the white horse uh, in chapter 6 verse 2 is the false christ is a false christ but here the rider in verse 11 is the true christ okay so we already studied about how anti christ is trying to uh, counterfeit Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is doing something and the same thing that Antichrist also will be trying to follow or uh, uh, he will also uh, try to do all those things what Jesus had done on his public ministry. So that's what we understand here also. You know, uh, you can see in chapter 6 verse 2, there is a white horse and there is, a one, there is one person sitting and riding the horse and that is the false Christ. That is that means the Antichrist. But in, in chapter 19, verse 11, you can see another uh, uh, rider or another person is sitting on a white horse. That is the true Christ or Jesus Christ. Now, uh, here he is not coming in the, in, the, in the air to take his people home because we know that uh, that is going to happen at the second coming of Jesus. Okay. So um, that which is also known as the secret coming of Jesus Christ. Okay. So in the second, the, the second coming of Jesus or the first phase of the second coming of Jesus is known as the secret coming of Jesus Christ. No, in this secret coming, Jesus is not putting his feet on the earth because he appears in air and we will be caught up with him. We know that, uh, I mean, even which is going to happen during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, in the secret coming, what is going to happen? Jesus is not coming on the earth or Jesus is not putting his feet on the earth because he appears in air, in air and we will be caught up with him when he appears in, in, in air. So that is going to happen in the second coming of Jesus Christ in the first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, when, when we listen to these words, uh, you may be you may be have a doubt why we are calling the second coming of Jesus as a secret coming. Okay, why we are calling the second coming of Jesus Christ as a second coming or 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 a, or a secret coming, since it is written in First Thessalonians chapter four verse sixteen. We know that verse very well. That uh, I mean, what is going to happen when Jesus is coming? When Jesus is returning? Okay, so in 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 First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 16, uh, which is very clearly written that Christ shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. Okay, So these things should be happening when Jesus Christ is coming in the, in the second coming of Jesus. Okay, What will happen? Christ shall descend from heaven with a shout. That means there will be a voice. There will be a shouting and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and with the trumpet of God. Then how can we say that coming, coming of Jesus Christ, or the second coming of Jesus Christ is a secret coming? No, by reading this 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, we cannot say that this is the secret coming. But the thing is, coming with a shout and voice and trumpet, 
the thing is only the believers or saints of god will be able to hear all those voices amen so we we call it as a secret coming because the the unbelieving world they cannot hear that sound they cannot hear the trumpet of god they cannot hear the voice of the archangel because the believers or the nutrishment church the saints of god they are only waiting for the second coming of jesus christ only those people will be listening to those voices that's the reason that we call it as a secret coming secret coming okay at the same time the unbelieving world they are not hearing all those voices but the remaining people who are not taken to heaven at the return of jesus christ will know about that wonderful event only after the rapture of the church because when christ is coming in the air mid air the church will be taken up from this place to to uh, to, to to the mid air and christ will be or, or or the church will be taken to heaven with jesus christ okay so at the same time the people those who are remaining in this world or the the unbelieving people the remaining people they will not know when jesus is returning at the same time after the return of jesus christ or after the rapture of the church only those people will know that okay something happened in this world that means the the believers the new testament church is taken up so then only they will be knowing that something happened that is the rapture of the church but we know one thing that after the rapture of the uh, church the new testament church the seven years of great tribulation will take place on the earth seven years of great tribulation will take place on the earth but we will be in heaven with christ for all those seven years we already studied about the great tribulation in the previous chapters okay so uh, you know uh, after the rapture of the church or after the second coming of the church or oh, sorry uh, christ you know the seven years of great tribulation will take place on the earth but we the people of god the saints of god will be with christ all those seven years and at the end of the great tribulation or right after the tribulation jesus will come to the earth with his people to conquer his enemies and establish his kingdom so that is going to happen right after the great tribulation period of 7 years or at the end of the great tribulation okay so what is going to happen you know at the end of the great tribulation jesus will come down to the earth amen with his people with his people we the believers of christ we the saints of god are with jesus christ in heaven that day so we together will come for, come to the earth and to uh, and uh, why we are coming to conquer the enemy of jesus christ and to conquer the enemy of uh, uh, of uh, the the new testament church and to establish the kingdom of god we know that the second coming of jesus have two phases two phases i already told you that but let me let me remind you one thing uh, uh, one thing from that portion because then only we will understand what is going to happen in the future so there will be two phases for the second coming of jesus christ okay the first one is the secret appearance which will happen in air to take his saints from the earth to heaven this is the first two phase of the second coming of jesus christ okay the secret appearance in air to take his saints or the to take the believers to take the 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 new testament church from the earth to the heaven and the second phase would be his glorious appearance to the earth with his saints so the second will happen or the second appearance will be the glorious appearance in that appearance jesus with his people will be coming down to the earth in the first two phase jesus is not coming to the earth but jesus is coming in the air but in the second phase jesus will be coming uh, jesus will be appearing as a as a as a glorious appearance into the earth with his saints and that is mentioned in zechariah chapter 14 verse 4 we will read that verse maybe zechariah chapter 14 verse 
there it is written, it is mentioned about the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ with his people. Yes. On that day, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. Okay, this is talking about the, the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ. But he said, on that day, his feet or the, the feet of Jesus will stand on the Mount of Olives. So that is called the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ. And that also is known as the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So in the first phase, he comes as a bridegroom. He comes as a bridegroom. We, we learn many things about the bride and the bridegroom and the, and the marriage supper of the lamb and uh, all those things. Okay. So in that, in the, in the previous class, we already studied about the, the engagement of the Jewish custom. You know, how they are doing their engagement or betrothal of uh, the bride and bridegroom and what is going to happen there. And uh, uh, after that, what is going to happen, that means uh, uh, the bridegroom will be going back to the uh, bride's house and receiving that bride and uh, bringing back to his house and having the, the marriage ceremony or wedding ceremony there. And after that, the supper will be there and all those things we already studied in the previous class. So we know that the first phase, he comes as a bridegroom. But in the second phase, he will be coming as a judge or as a king, which means as a judge, he will do the final judgment on Satan and on the wicked people. And as a king, he will establish his millennial kingdom in Jerusalem for thousand years. And those things are mentioned in chapters 20 and 21. So in the first phase, he comes as a bridegroom. In the second phase, he will be coming as a judge or as a king. So why we are seeing that Jesus Christ will be uh, appearing in the second phase as a judge or a king? Because the judgment of the wicked people is uh, not at all taken place. Okay, But that should happen after the second coming of Jesus Christ. So again, Jesus will be coming to judge the people. Okay. The first phase, Jesus coming and taking his people, taking his saints or the New Testament church into heaven. Then after that, Jesus and his people will be coming down to the earth as a judge or as a king. Okay, which means, you know, the judge, he will be, as a judge, he will be doing the final judgment. He'll be doing the final judgment. You can see many judgments and punishments in the, in chapters uh, 11, 12, and 13, and 14, all those chapters. But at the same time, the final judgment will be done on Satan and also on the wicked people uh, uh, during the time of uh, that uh, right after the great tribulation. You know, as a king, what is he going to do? As a king, he will be establishing the millennial kingdom. So the millennial kingdom will be in Jerusalem and that will be longing up to up to up to thousand years. The thousand years of millennial kingdom will happen there. And those things are mainly uh, mentioned in chapter 20 and 21. We will be studying about those things in uh, next classes. Okay. And that appearance is mentioned here in chapter 19, verse 11. The same appearance, the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ is mentioned in chapter 19, verse 11. So let us uh, read that verse 11 once again. Then only we will understand what are the specialities of I mean, Jesus Christ, or what are the specialities of, I mean, Jesus who is sitting on the white um, white horse. Okay, let us read uh, chapter 19, verse 11 once again. Yeah. Then I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Okay, so here, the rider of horse, that means the person who is sitting, on the white horse, that is Jesus Christ, okay? So Jesus Christ is sitting on the white horse, which is related to the conduct of Roman army. We will study about that maybe a few, few seconds, okay? So now the thing that Jesus Christ is sitting 
on the white horse that is always related to the conduct of the Roman army. Now, what is, what is, what is happening and how they are doing uh, in, the, in the Roman army is, you know, that right after, the, uh, right after getting the victory over any other nation, the Roman king or the Roman emperor would sit on the white horse to announce that they got victory. Because this is the, this is the conduct of the Roman army. You know, when uh, the Roman army or the Roman emperor is getting victory over any other nation, the Roman king or the emperor would sit on the white horse to announce that they got victory. So that is the announcement that, okay, we got the victory. We got the victory. That's the reason the king is sitting on the white horse. So that indicates that you know the 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 the, uh, the 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 triumphant victory of Jesus Christ. Okay, so when Jesus is sitting on the on the white horse, that means that is the triumphant victory of Jesus Christ, and his victorious return to the place where he was crucified. Okay, listen. So when in in Zechariah chapter, I mean, uh, fourteen, we read that Jesus will put his feet on the olive. Okay, the mountain of olive. That means it speaks about the Jerusalem. Okay, so that was the place that Jesus was crucified. Jesus was crucified. So Jesus will be returning, and he, the the victorious return of Jesus Christ will be happening to the place where he was crucified. Okay, again, uh, you know, in in Zechariah chapter nine, Zechariah chapter nine verse nine, uh, Zechariah prophesied about the first coming of Jesus. Okay. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, um, uh, yeah, we will read that verse, then only we will uh, go through that portion. Yeah, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, yeah. your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay, no, thousands and thousands of years ago, the prophet Zechariah, he prophesied about the first coming of Jesus. The first coming of Jesus was the incarnation, incarnation of Jesus Christ, or Jesus came into this world, taking as a, as a form of human being and uh, uh, saving the people and died for our sins. Okay, so that was the first coming of Jesus Christ. So about that first coming of Jesus Christ, Zechariah wrote in his book that in chapter nine, verse nine, that Jesus would ride on a donkey. Jesus would ride on a donkey and that already happened during the time of his public ministry when he was entering into the Jerusalem city, I mean, the city, okay? And he was sitting on a donkey. He was sitting on a donkey when he was entering into Jerusalem, okay? When he was doing his public ministry. So that already happened. But now we see that he is sitting on a white horse as a victorious king. Okay. In first coming, Jesus was sitting on a donkey. That means he, he was riding a donkey. Now he is not sitting on the donkey. You know, he, is a, he is a victorious king. So in the first coming, Jesus came into this world as a humbled person. That means he was a poor person. He was not having anything. And uh, he humbled himself and he emptied himself. It is what, that is what we read in Bible, that he emptied himself and came down to this earth, okay? Now, in, in chapter 19, we understand after the second coming of Jesus Christ, I mean, in the, the, the second, second phase or the second glorious appearance, we can see that Jesus is sitting on a white horse. Jesus is sitting on a white horse, which shows that he is the victorious king. He is the victorious king, and he is coming to conquer everything, and he is going to rule over all the nations of this world. Okay, now we will go to the next point. That is the names of Jesus who sits on the white horse. The names of Jesus who sits on the white horse. Um, that also is from chapter 19, verses uh, 11 following. Yeah, 11 following uh, up, to, up to 16, I think, uh, there are many things which is written about different names are given. Different names are given for Jesus who sits on the white horse. <coughs> different names are given uh, for Jesus who sits on the 
white horse. See the first name which is mentioned in chapter 19 verse 11 that is faithful and true. That means faithful and true is one of the names of Jesus Christ in 19 verse 11. We know that in contrast to the beast who was unfaithful, right? You know, the beast or the Antichrist was unfaithful and he was a false prophet who broke the covenant with Israel. We know that we already studied about that. You know? uh, Antichrist is um, uh, getting the control and Antichrist, when Antichrist is reigning or ruling over the, over the people of, of this world, um, you know, in the uh, first, uh, uh, the, the beginning uh, half portion, the beginning half uh, time, that means three and a half years, um, he will make a covenant with uh, uh, the people of Israel, especially, and saying that, okay, I will bring the peace into you and I will bring the peace for you and everything will be okay when I'm ruling. But after that three and a half years, okay, in the second time, the second period, he will be changing that covenant and he will break the covenant and he will try to persecute and uh, uh, torture the people of Israel. So that is going to happen. So here we read about Jesus who is sitting on the white horse that says his name is faithful and true. Our Jesus Christ is faithful and he is true. But the beast and the Antichrist is always unfaithful, unfaithful. And second name which is given there is the secret name. Okay. In 19 verse 12. Let's read that verse. 19 verse 12. His eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. And 13 or so. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood and the name by which he is called is the, the word of God. <clears throat> okay. So the second name is a secret name. We do not know what is that name, right? We do not know what is that name, but it is written a secret name will be for, given for Jesus in 19 chapter 12. It is really exciting to know that even in heaven, we shall learn new things about our Lord Jesus Christ. We know many things now. We know many things about Jesus Christ now, and we studied many things and we have uh, read many name, names for Jesus Christ now, but it is really going to be exciting to know about even more about Jesus Christ, even after reaching in heaven, after reaching heaven, okay? We shall learn new things about our Lord Jesus Christ again, I mean, And the third, I mean, uh, name is given the word of God in chapter 19, verse 13. The word of God is the name of Jesus given in this chapter. That means the word of God is one of the familiar names of the Lord in scripture, especially in, uh, in Gospel of John, we read many places that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. He took the form of a man and the word came down to this earth. All those portions are there, okay? Especially in John's Gospel. So Jesus is the incarnated word of Father God. So that is the meaning that Jesus, name of Jesus is given here as the word of God. And again, the last one is in, 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 in verse 16. In verse 16, let's read 16 also. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, so the last name which is given uh, uh, for Jesus Christ, who is sitting on the white horse, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is his victorious name, his victorious name. And this title speaks about Christ's sovereignty above all kings and all the lords of this world and all the emperors of this world. You know, during the time of the great tribulation, there will be many kings. And nowadays, it is not common that uh, only, I think, the Arabian countries, they are having the kings. But we know that, you know, during the great tribulation time, there will be many kings and many emperors and many uh, lords will be there. But we understand that when Jesus is coming down to this earth in his glorious appearance, after the 
great tribulation in his glorious glorious appearance jesus will take that name the king of kings and the lord of lords the king of kings and lord of lords that is the victorious name of jesus christ amen so in that sovereignty okay in that sovereignty jesus will control all the kings of this world all the lords of this world all the emperors of this world okay so that is going to happen and that will be these are the four uh, names which is given for uh, jesus christ who is sitting on the white horse now let us see what are the characteristics or descriptions about the conquering king what are the characteristics or what are the descriptions about the conquering king jesus who is sitting on the white horse okay we are not going to read uh, all those portions again because we already read those portions from 11 to 16 or most okay so uh, all these points which you are going to write down is already there in this portion we already read it i'll just read out all those points and we'll move on okay what are the characteristics of jesus because jesus is conquering king jesus is the conquering king that jesus uh, glorious appearance will be to will be to conquer the kings of this world and to conquer all the all the all the nations of this world okay that doesn't mean that jesus is not having any authority or jesus is not having any power over the nations now jesus has the power but he is not um you know he is not practicing that power now he is just I mean, losing everything and giving the the power to the to the worldly princes okay that is what we uh, we, we read in john uh, john's gospel that jesus once he said that okay the the prince of this world is coming but i don't have anything to with anything with uh, that person okay so he was speaking about satan or devil okay so Uh, at the same time jesus will be coming to conquer the king or conquer the nations after the after the great tribulation now in these verses especially in chapter 19 verses 12 to 16 there are many things which is written about jesus the first thing is his eyes his eyes are as a flame of fire his eyes are as a flame of fire which means that symbolizes his searching judgment that sees all that means the flame of fire means he can see the eyes are just like a flame of fire means he can see everything and he will judge everything okay after seeing after watching every person he is going to judge everyone so that is the authority of jesus and the second thing is on his head many crowns are there okay on his head many crowns are there that indicate his magnificent rule and sovereignty okay so uh, jesus will have that uh, that magnificent rule and the sovereignty that shows his on his head many crowns are there there are many crowns that means the authority and the sovereignty of jesus christ and another thing is he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood okay he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood that means speaks of the judgment and the conquest of his enemies that means jesus will judge the people and the kings and the enemies and jesus will conquest conquer all these people so that's the reason it is written that the cloth of jesus is with a robe dipped in blood that means he has the authority to judge and he has the authority to kill and he has the authority to conquer all the enemies and and another thing is there is a sharp sword coming from his mouth right a sharp sword is coming from his mouth and while nanna moorchayulla oru wall purappadunu ennaanu malayalathil parnirikkunnathu that means that is a symbol of god's word which is sharper than the two edged sword in book of hebrews we read chapter 4 we read that what is speciality of the word of god speciality of the word of god the one or among them is which is sharper than the two edged sword so here we can see 
there is a sharp word which is coming from the mouth of Jesus Christ. That is the symbol of God's word, which is sharper than the two-edged word. Okay, that much sharper it is. Okay, and again, the another thing, the next thing is he has a rod of iron. He has a rod of iron. That is a symbol of his justice and he rules over the earth. Okay, that is a symbol of his justice and that which means he rules over the earth. And the last one is he treads the wine press. He treads the wine press that is in. Uh, I think uh, verse yeah, verse 15 it says that uh, he treads the wine press, okay, which shows the judgment at Armageddon uh, uh, battle. Okay, so we will learn about that. That uh, you know, in, in Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 20, uh, you can see a battle that is called the Armageddon battle, Armageddon battle. We will learn about that uh, in, in the uh, next few minutes. Okay, so what is going to happen? So the last thing, which is the char characteristics of Jesus is written there, he will tread the wine press, okay? That is the judgment at the Armageddon, uh, which is mentioned in chapter 14, verses uh, 14 to 20. Okay, again, the next point is the supper in earth. The supper in earth. The supper in earth is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19, verses 17 to 21. <clears throat> chapter 19, verses 17 to 21. Okay. You know, in, in chapter 19, verse 9, we saw there a marriage supper of the Lamb. We already studied in the previous class. Okay. There is a marriage supper of the Lamb of Christ. That means Lamb is Jesus Christ. Okay. In 19, chapter 9, we, there, is, there is a marriage supper. Okay. And uh, in verses 70 to 21, there is another feast or another supper. Okay. In 19, 9, there is a marriage supper of the Lamb. But in verses 17 through 21, there is another feast or another supper. So the first half of chapter, uh, chapter 19 describes the marriage supper of the lamb but the last half describes the supper of the great god so it is particularly written in that portion that it is the it is the uh, supper of the uh, great god it is the supper of the uh, great god okay so two things are there in the same chapter the first marriage supper of the lamb is there and in second half it, which describes the supper of the great God. Okay? So, you know, uh, who all are invited to eat uh, the supper? We know that the, who all are, were invited for uh, uh, eating the supper in the first, uh, first uh, uh, supper or first feast. And now the question is, who all are invited to eat the supper? The answer is given in verse 17. Answer is given in verse 17. Yeah, let us read that verse. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, come gather for the great supper of God. Okay, who all are invited to eat the supper? In this supper, who all are invited to eat the supper? Okay, the all birds which fly in mid heaven. Okay, all birds which fly in mid heaven. Agashamadhyaya parakana sagala pachigalodum enana parajarikina. So all the birds from the mid heaven will come, come forward to eat the supper. Okay. So God will announce, God will, or the angel of God will call all the birds of the air and they will come and eat all this, I mean, flesh. You know, what are the different food items or different dishes which is served at that supper? No, in our supper also in our uh, you know the feast and uh, uh, in our uh, uh, programs we will have different kinds of dishes. Okay, in this I mean uh, program also in this supper also uh, in this uh, I mean particular uh, invitees will be having a, a different supper, a different supper, different dishes will be there. Dish, uh, dishes will be served 
at that supper, okay, which is uh, which is mentioned in, in chapter eighteen, okay. Uh, sorry, verse eighteen. In verse eighteen, the angel is calling all the birds of the sky to eat the flesh, to eat the flesh, okay, of what of kings, commanders, mighty men, horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves, and small and great. Okay, so what is the what is special food item or what special food item or dishes uh, which is served in this supper for the for the birds of the birds of the sky? It is very clearly written that that is going to be the flesh. Okay, manushyan manushyan the shariram mana abre karikyan bogunda da. Abre karikyan bogunda da. The birds of the sky. Agashatile paravagal karikyan bogunda da. I mean manushyan the shariram ayri ke. Okay, enda kya ana? The angel is calling all the birds of the sky and saying that you come and eat the flesh, the flesh of kings, flesh of the commanders, flesh of the mighty men, flesh of the horses, flesh of those who are sitting on the horse, and also flesh of all men, both free men and slaves, and the, the small men and great men. Okay? You are going to eat the flesh of all these people. Okay. And next question, you know how the food or how the supper was uh, supper was prepared by God? Then how God is going to prepare that supper? That is mentioned in verses 19 to 21. Verses 19 to 21, uh, a special thing is written there that we read that beast, kings and their armies comes to fight against Jesus who was sitting on the white horse. And against his army, okay, who are coming? Beast is coming. Kings are coming. All the armies of these nations are coming. They all are coming together to a place, and they are proclaiming that we are going to fight with Jesus Christ, who is sitting on the white horse. Okay, but it is written in 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 verse twenty one twenty one. Uh, we read that verse 21. And the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. That means, you now in verse 21, it is very clearly written that all those satanic armies, or all those kings and all the, 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 the armies of the kings, um, were killed by the sword by this word which came from the mouth of Jesus Christ. So we saw that there is a, there is a sword, sharper sword is coming out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. So all these people were killed by this word which comes from the mouth of Jesus Christ. And their flesh was prepared as a supper for the birds of the air. And it is very clearly written in the last sentence of the chapter that all the birds were satisfied with that delicious human flesh food okay so this is going to be the delicious food for the birds and all these birds will be eating eating uh, these flesh of these people and they all will be satisfied with the delicious human flesh food okay so that is going to happen uh, right after the great tribulation period so the same thing is mentioned uh, prophetically by prophet Ezekiel okay the same thing is written in Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 17 to 20. You will read that portion also. Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 17 to 20. As for you, son of man, thus says the Lord God, speak to the birds of every sort and to all beasts of the field. Assemble and come, gather from all around to sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. Yeah. a great sacrificial feast on the mountains of Israel. And you shall eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princess of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of he goats, of bulls, and all of them fat beasts of Bashan. And you shall eat, you should, you shall eat fat till you are filled and drink blood till you are drunk at the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. And you shall be filled at my table with horses and charioteers with mighty men and all kinds of warriors, declares the Lord God. Amen. So the same thing is written there also. Thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, Prophet Ezekiel also was writing 
about this thing which is going to happen after the great tribulation when jesus christ is appearing his glorious appearance okay into this world you know the same thing will be happening you know uh, um, and jesus will I mean, kill all the people all the kings and the and the and the leaders and all those people the army with his sword from his mouth and the the flies will come or the, the birds will come from above and they will eat all this uh, flesh of these people so the same thing is going to happen that's Ezekiel prophesied and that is going to happen and again it is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19 and that is going to happen during the time of uh, uh, the the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ in future okay so that is it. that is it about uh, that point and the next point is the great battle of Armageddon the great battle of Armageddon which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19 verse 19 and also chapter 16 verse 16 the great battle of Armageddon <clears throat> Okay, I, I remember while I was teaching uh, from chapter 16, from chapter 16 and also from chapter 14 uh, about the veil judgments. We, we learn about uh, the veil judgments or bow judgments from chapter 16, right? So when I was uh, teaching that chapter 16 and also chapter 14, uh, I told you that I will be talking about the battle of Armageddon maybe later when we study from chapter 19, right? And so that is going to happen now that I told you already that we'll be talking about the, the battle of Armageddon. Okay. We, most of us, uh, we do not know what is the, what is the battle of Armageddon in Bible uh, mentioned, but uh, later I, I told you that we'll be discussing that later. Now we are going to study about that thing in, in chapter 19 itself. We already learned about that, but at the same time we'll be reading maybe uh, chapter 19 verses 19 and 16 verses verse 16 yeah now let us read those two verses now revelation chapter 19 verses verse 19 and chapter 16 verse 16 yeah and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army um verse 16 verse 16 yeah and they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Okay, so in 16, chapter 16, verse 16, you can see that, I mean, the word uh, Armageddon is written there. The word Armageddon is written there. But in chapter 19, verse 19, that word is not there. The, the place name is not there. Okay, anyway, this is known as the Armageddon battle, the Armageddon, um, Armageddon Yudha. Okay, so the word Armageddon, ultimately comes from the Hebrew word, okay? So ultimately, the word um, Armageddon is coming from the Hebrew word. That Hebrew word is Harmageddon, Harmageddon. Harmageddon is the, is the Hebrew word for Armageddon, which means the Mount of Megiddo, the Mount of Megiddo. The Mount of Megiddo and Armageddon is same. The Mount of Megiddo and Armageddon is same which is the predicted location of the battle. So there will be a battle happening after the great tribulation. That means uh, when, when, I mean, the, the, the glorious appearance of Jesus, of Jesus happens, there will be a Armageddon uh, battle will happen. And the same, the place is known as the Armageddon or Mount Megiddo, okay? Which is the predicted location of the battle. In uh, uh, chapter 16, Verses 12 to 16 is the record of what will happen towards the end of the tribulation. Okay, Towards the end of the tribulation or after the tribulation, after the great tribulation, what is going to happen? That is mentioned in chapter 16 also, verses 12 to 16. Okay, That uh, when an angel pours out his sixth bowl or sixth bowl judgment or the veil's judgment or the wrath of the God on the earth, Okay, so that is going to happen in that place. Okay, and this wrath will be poured out from heaven on, on, the, on the people of this world in that day. 
So, you know, Bible scholars are strongly believing that uh, the same battle is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 20 or so, as a, as a final battle that uh, will occur on the earth, that Christ will come from heaven as a, as a, as a conquering king. Uh, uh, and, the, and the purpose of that coming is to defeat the forces of the Antichrist. So in this battle, in this Armageddon battle, we know that uh, Jesus will be coming and appearing into this world and all the people, all the nations will gather together in that particular place and Jesus is coming to conquer the kings and Jesus is coming to defeat the forces of the Antichrist. Okay, that is known as the Armageddon battle. And uh, you know the, the exact location of Armageddon is is not clear uh, because there is no mountain called Megiddo nearby Jerusalem at present. So at present, everything is collapsed and there is no mountain called Megiddo now. However, there was a valley of Megiddo in Old Testament time, which is around 60 miles north from Jerusalem. Okay, In the Old Testament time, that means when the, the Old Testament kings and all the rulers and all those people were living in uh, those days, there was a valley Megiddo, uh, 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 which was which was around 60 miles north of uh, Jerusalem. Okay, you know when you go through the history, throughout the history, many armies have fought when countless battles in that area. There were many battles happened. There were many wars happens, like uh, the Egyptians, Egyptians were having the battle, Assyrians were having the battle, the Greek people were having. And the Roman people were having many, 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 I mean, battles in that particular place. Anyway, the same thing is going to happen. All these people will gather together and will have to have a battle with Jesus Christ who was sitting on the white horse. And that shows that Jesus will get victory over all these nations. Jesus will, I mean, defeat all the kings of this world. And, you know, when you, when you study the history, you know, the history says that Megiddo was the site of battle during the First World War also, and also the Arab-Israel War, in which happened in 1948. Okay, so the history says that this Megiddo, or the, 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 the place called Armageddon, that valley, was a site of battles during the time of the First World War, and also when the Arab-Israel War was happening in 1948. So in the future, the same valley of Megiddo will be the will be the focal point for the battle of Armageddon. So the, the battle of Armageddon also will be happening in that place, particular place in, in future after the Great Tribulation. So again, uh, when, when we think about that, we understand that the valley of Megiddo or Armageddon was famous for two great victories in Israel's history. Okay. Uh, that place particularly was the famous place for two great victories. Two great victories in Israel's history had happened in this particular place. That place is Megiddo or Armageddon. That place is very famous for two things, victorious things. The first thing is written in Judges chapter 4, verse 15. In Judges chapter 4, verse 15, you can see uh, uh, Barak's victory over the Canaanites. Okay, Barak's victory over the Canaanites, which is written in Judges chapter four, verse fifteen. And secondly, Gideon's victory over the Midianites. Gideon's victory over the Midianites, which is mentioned in Judges chapter seven, also happened in that particular area, in that particular place. Okay, so uh, in in that portion. When you read Bible, uh, there will be some different different names are given there, but the same place is known as uh, the the um, Armageddon, or uh, you can call it as a uh, Megiddo. Okay, so in Judges chapter four verse fifteen and Judges chapter chapter seven, and also Armageddon was also the site of two great tragedies. Okay. There were, there were two great tragedies happened in Armageddon or in that particular place. The first thing is the death of Saul and his sons. The death of Saul and his sons, in which is mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 31, <clears throat> verse 8. 
in first samuel chapter 31 <coughs> 31 verse 8 you can see the death of saul and his sons okay the death of saul and his sons is mentioned in first samuel chapter 31 okay and the second tragedy was the death of king josiah the death of king josiah which is mentioned in second king <clears throat> chapter 23 verses 29 and 30 and second chronicles chapter 35 verse 22 second chronicles chapter 35 verse 22 And I believe if our interpretation of chapter 19 is correct, okay, the battle of Armageddon will be the real battle in the future near the end of the tribulation. No, we are interpreting according to our understanding about the book of Revelation. And if that interpretation is correct, that this the, the battle of Armageddon will be the last one, the last battle in future near the end of the tribulation. And we know that the demonic influences will cause the kings of the earth to gather their armies to this particular place. That is very clearly written in other prophetical books and also in chapter 19 of Book of Revelation. You know, the demonic influences will cause all the kings of this earth to gather their armies to this place. Because during those days, during the time of the Great Tribulation, there is no people of God here. All the kings will be led and all the kings will be, all the kings and the uh, political leaders and religious leaders will be led by and controlled by the Antichrist. Okay, so what is going to happen? Uh, at the end of the Great Tribulation, all these demonic influences will call all the kings of this earth and all political leaders, all the religious leaders, and they will gather together with their armies into this place, into this place, Armageddon. And the Antichrist will be leading the army. <clears throat> but Jesus Christ will return to this earth with the armies of heaven. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olive. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olive. And he will defeat the forces of evil. He will cast the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire. He will bind the Satan. It is very clearly written in that particular portion that he will bind the Satan and he will set up his kingdom on this earth for a thousand years. And that is the great future. And that is the great future hope and expectation of the New Testament church even today that we are expecting. Okay, And especially in chapter 19, verse 14, chapter 19, verse 14, it is clearly written that, and the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. Okay, In chapter 19, verse 14, we read that when Jesus comes down from heaven, a great army also is following him. And they are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and following him on white horses. Okay. So let us see who are these armies. Who are these armies? Okay. Who are these armies who is following Jesus Christ when he is coming down from heaven in his glorious appearance? Okay. So it is believed that we, the bride of Jesus Christ, or the New Testament saints, will follow him mainly, and also there will be other people with him. Okay. We, the people of God, we, the, 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 the bride of Jesus Christ, or the New Testament saints will follow him. And also there will be the saints and the martyrs will be there from the great tribulation period. Because, you know, in the great tribulation period, because of the torture of, uh, because of the persecution of Antichrist, many will die. Okay? At the same time, many will say that we will not obey the, the, the word of Antichrist or we will not worship you. So they will have to go through the tribulation. They will have to go through the tribulation, but they will overcome that. They will overcome, some of them will be overcoming and some of them will be dying or taking martyrdom. Okay. And those people also will be there. And the Old Testament saints will be there. <clears throat> the Old Testament saints will be there and the angels also will be there. Okay. All these people together coming down from heaven during the end of the great tribulation. Remember, Jesus 
is not only in his contest okay but the armies of heaven will be riding with him then not only jesus but there are there are many people going to come with jesus into this world into this earth okay we the believers also will be with him coming down from heaven hallelujah and the army in a particular thing that you have to understand from there is the army doesn't have any weapons okay all the other armies have weapons but now in this chapter 19 the army who is coming with or following jesus christ in his glorious appearance they doesn't have any weapons okay because it will be unnecessary for the army to fight for jesus christ himself will defeat the enemy with the sword of his mouth with the sword of his mouth he is going to defeat the enemy so today as we conclude the study of chapter 19 let me ask you something that are you ready to sing that hallelujah choruses in heaven hallelujah we already we already studied in from, from chapter 19 verses the initial verses of 19 okay that there is a there is a hallelujah chorus singing okay there is a hallelujah cho- chorus the people are singing that chorus because jesus is victorious and jesus got the victory and jesus is sitting on the white horse amen so let me ask you one thing are you ready to sing that hallelujah chorus now and are you prepared to attend in the marriage supper of the lamb the marriage supper of the lamb is going to happen then are you ready for that are you prepared to to attend for the marriage supper of the lamb and are we preparing ourselves for the return of a of a bridegroom jesus as we the church is already engaged with jesus christ we know that we are already engaged with the the uh, with the with jesus christ I mean our engagement is over I mean we know that very clearly it is done no so now we are waiting for the bridegroom we are waiting for the return of the bridegroom to take all of us amen so let us all i mean uh, commit us with the mighty hand of god let's pray lord lord as we are gathering together for this bible study so lord as we are i mean coming to the conclusion of this book oh lord lord we need to understand more about the second coming of jesus christ and the second phase of jesus christ and also what is going to happen in the future after the second coming of jesus christ at the same time let me ask you one question are you ready for that are you prepared enough to to receive jesus and are you prepared enough to go through all these i mean i mean things and uh, are you ready to 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 receive the bridegroom are you ready to receive the bridegroom if not this evening let us all close our eyes in the presence of god and make a prayer like this oh lord i need your presence of god father god we need your presence of god hallelujah many times we are not prepared enough to receive jesus we are not prepared enough to go with jesus when jesus is coming when jesus is returning many times we are not ready to go with him but this evening let us take this opportunity to prepare ourselves for a moment pray in your heart praying that oh lord i need that preparation oh lord i'm waiting for the bridegroom i'm waiting for the bridegroom the church is waiting for the bridegroom the new testament church is waiting for the bridegroom the eternal life church of god the people of god we are waiting for the bridegroom to come and he will receive us hallelujah let us all prepare ourselves let us lead a holy life in our life and let us pray that oh lord i need that preparation oh lord help me oh god help me oh god so that we will be able to i mean we will be able to see the glory of god we will be able to i mean come with jesus christ in his appearance in his glorious appearance with him hallelujah and we will follow jesus and we will come down with him i mean after our i mean after our rapture we will be coming with him and we will be ruling over the nations of this world hallelujah let's pray for that and let's all i mean come to us with the mighty hand of god let's pray for all the people those who have joined in this meeting particular meeting and also in this bible study and let us pray that lord bless every one of us a god bless every family so lord hallelujah help us a god help our relatives a lord there are many people those who are not in christ the lord let us pray for all those people hallelujah so that they also will be coming and attending in the coming days in the in this programs hallelujah they also will be accepting jesus as a personal savior hallelujah let's pray for them i mean i request a 